think this is around by the time where, where they would tell you listen to this track, bitch. I don't give a fuck now. So concerned about my real life, and that's alright. But who are you? Just another nigga with a strap. It don't take rocket science to shoot. You don't know shit about getting bricks out. You probably still work true for true. You don't know shit about on your blood because you paid your bills with all that loot. How about your baby about to be born and he don't got pampers, wipes, or food? How about your mama fucking your best friend and y'all both just finished school? But it's okay. She thinks it's cool. You're in her way. It's time you move. And you just paid all her damn bills, so you feel like a fool. So what do you suggest I do? You think you know? You got no clue. So please don't tell me what you think I ain't been doing. I don't give a fuck if they don't like me. Welcome to AJ's Day. Yes, I'm back. About to do a review of the week and talk about how I feel about this country. That it's funny because I'm trying to get into the White House, but this is so funny because how I see things now. Well, I have been, but I'm strongly into my belief that I'm just tired. Um, but I'm still going to fight for the people. Um, the review. I want to talk about Richard Spence. Uh, the one who said uh, uh, Caucasians actually built the pyramid. That is so interesting. I can't get over that. That he's like totally like every typical Caucasian. Not all Caucasian, but most of the Caucasians are uneducated, who's in this white nationalist, who's Ku Klux Klansman, skinheads, all these people, even the unconscious, unconscious Caucasians who believe the bullshit that you want to try to take all our history. You try through century, century of time that, guess what? It always reveals itself. How dare you sit up there and say that the pyramids alone, Richard Spence, you uneducated fool, that even say that um, the pyramids was built by Caucasian because they was they are brilliant. No, honey, guess what? The pyramids were built by Africans who dark skinned. It wasn't Caucasians. You were living in the caves. So stop trying to make your people. That's why we are so patient with you guys. Because we know how ignorant you are. And I'm no longer patient. I'm conscious. I'm wide awake. I'm not going to be patient. I'm not going to be your mama. I'm not going to tolerate your bullshit. You have been doing this through century of times to my ancestors and I am no longer accepting your behavior. If you cannot get it right, that's your problem. I'm not going to tolerate you. I, and I always tell you, I'm not going to eat at your door, sleep at your table. I'm not going to I'm not going to eat at your table and sleep at your door, excuse me. I'm not going to do that. I am a Resist, oh, I am a militant. I uh, I resist everything what you have tried to teach me. The lies. I will not accept. Just like yesterday, everybody was sitting at the table gathering together for so-called Thanksgiving. And it's not a so-called. It actually happened. But it didn't happen with the gathering. 
it happened by the killing of Native Americans, the raping of the women that they are so good of raping. Um, European, Caucasians, so good of doing that. Um, no, I'm not going to accept your holidays. I'm not going to accept anything what you want to put in my mouth and think I should eat the shit. No, I will not accept that. I will not accept your behavior. No, I will not. A lot of people do. That's on them. But I'm not going to do it. I will not and I shall not accept your behavior. Your behavior is tolerated by others, not by me. So once you cross me, and I and when I say cross, it's like cross my path and you start disrespecting me, I will put your ass in your place. Simple as that. Sim it's just that simple to me. It's not an ABC. You do not get an ABC. You do not get a chance because the chances that Native Americans and Africans allow you to give, they, they allow you to have a chance. They allow, they accept you. And once you got into that and you got a chance, you murdered, you raped, you put people in slavery because you want them to be like you. So, no, I will not. You can say that I have hatred. I have no hatred. I have reaction. The reactions is towards your action. You, Europeans, suspect us not to react. You, Europeans, continue to want us to take your shit, gobble it up like they did last night and yesterday, and eat it all up. And just all you got to do is say, I'm sorry, but you continue to shit on someone's face. I will not. I will not accept your behavior. I will not accept your action. I will give you reaction. So when you lie on television, Richard Spence, and say that the pyramids was built because the reason why they want to take credit of because nobody can't figure out how the pyramids was built in the days. That's why they deface the statues so they didn't want to show the wide, the wide nose and the big nose and the big lips. They didn't want people to know that Africans actually built the pyramids and they was highly intelligent people. That it shows anyway that everything was invented in United States of America by Africans. You can't take that history away. If you try, it still will show up. It still will show up. Through century of time that you guys have taken, have taken, have taken, have taken. You have taken lies that you want to say, I'm sorry. Like Bill, President Bill Clinton said up there, he's okay. But at the end of the day, your apology is not accepted. People will sit up there and say, African Americans are always holding their hands out for something. We didn't ask your ass to bring us over here. You can give reparation to everyone on this earth, but you cannot give reparations to us. You have given reparations to Asians when you put them in um, camps. You have given reparations to Jews and you had nothing to do with the Holocaust. You are giving reparations every year to Israel, people who live in Israel. You have given reparations to everyone except us. And if we ask for a hand, that we never ask you guys for shit. That's my favorite word today. Shit. My ancestors haven't even asked you to bring us over here. In America. 
but you went over there because you was too damn lazy to do anything in your fields or uh, build buildings. That, by the way, we already knew how to build buildings. We had our own cities in Africa. But you came over there and they gave you chances. And what did you do at showing the love and care that they had, our ancestors had? You put their ass in slaves. You be, they became slaves. Put them in slavery. Just as you did with the Native Americans. They, this was their land. You took their land. You killed, you raped, and you took it and told them if they did not become like you as putting your hair and everything, you brought diseases to them. You pushed them all the way over to Oklahoma. At that time, it wasn't called Oklahoma. This is history, people. What I'm teaching you. They allowed you to come in on their land of so-called American. KKA. They allow you to come. And it wasn't called American then. And they welcome you. Open arms just like our ancestors did. As the same. Richard Spencer, I'm teaching you a lesson because you know nothing about the damn history. Then you, then you said y'all was brilliant, brilliant of putting people in slavery. Why wasn't you brilliant enough to do your own fields? Oh, that takes work and that takes thinking. Came over here and the Indians welcome you guys. What did you do? You slaughtered them. Let's take a moment of thinking. How they slaughtered. Do you understand? People. I'm giving the effect. You slaughtered these Native Americans and then turned around and say they are rapists, they are thieves, they are drunks. You took their lands and when they did not listen, you made Andrew Jackson, I would call that bitch a president for nothing, sent them all the way, made them walk from, so the name called now is Nashville, made them walk all the way over to Oklahoma and thousands and thousands of Native Americans died. The trails of tears, people. But you set up in your homes yesterday and celebrate the massacre. You saying Thanksgiving. The massacre of Native Americans. And they're doing it now in South Dakota. But you sit back here and do nothing but celebrate it and fill your belly. They didn't even have a chance to fill their bellies. They was killed. Just like our ancestors. And then the ones that was in the Tracian camps. Yeah, they had Tracian camps too. They had fences surrounding them. The ones who were surrounded in the Tracian, Tracian camps, in the camps, period. They turned around and told them they had to go to school because they had to be like them. If they did not follow that, now did you hear me? If they did not follow that, they had to eat the food, what they gave them, Caucasians. Again, this is the same tactic they did with our ancestors. They want to say, we fed you, we clothed you. The Native Americans reject all that. They start hunting buffaloes that you no longer see. 
I'll get to the reason why you no longer see them that much. They was called bison. Do you hear what I say? B-I-A-S-O-N. Bison. They were called. They wasn't called buffalo, but they are buffaloes. The Caucasian Europeans saw that they were hunt hunting these bison slash buffaloes. They said, you are not eating my food, what I'm giving you. You should be grateful. So what they did is start killing. Yes, you Europeans, I know your history. You start killing these buffaloes so there was shortage. So these Native Americans had to start depending on you. See, that's the same attitude that you have about us. You say that um, we're, we're always asking. That's how you want us to. To ask and beg. But you didn't know that it was going to be 98% of people, of your people on welfare and begging. We work hard. We're dignified people. We're proud people. Just as Native Americans were. And are. So they didn't depend on you. Start killing the bisons. The buffaloes. So they could depend on you. And guess what? They came alone. And they came to these camps. And they start depending on you. So now you see. Come to 2016. That you see that no one is dependent on you that much. Only your own people. But you still put that propaganda out. And say that we. Are Native Americans. Are people of our colors. Are depending on you. No we're not. We're depending on ourselves. Because we know we will not receive anything from you guys. Even in your own constitution, it says African Americans shall receive 40 acres in a mule. We have not received those yet. Then you put the stipulations on the Native Americans if your parents close to the Native Americans, then you will receive reparations. But if you're far away, a far descendant, you cannot receive reparations and you have to prove it. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? The reason why you can't do that with African Americans is because you know you can see that we are part Africans. We know our history. We, we are going to stay proud people. You tend to take and take and take when you can't take no more. Then you want to say, go back to Africa. Or you pretend like you're not a racist. I tell any Caucasian, even the unco- now when it comes down to my people who happen to be people of color who voted for Trump. I had one Caucasian, um, and it's not it's more than one, but I asked him the other day, and I asked him, I said, why did you vote for Trump? He said, because I can't stand liars. Hillary is a liar. Uh, I didn't even respond. The reason why I didn't respond is because he's ignorant. He's either unconscious racist or he's just a racist. Because I tell anybody... Whoever voted for Trump, and I tell any European in their face, whoever voted for Trump, I guarantee you, you're going to say, well, he's going to get rid of the immigrants. Racist. We was once immigrants. You brought us over here. You hated us because of our skin. So you're, so they're immigrants. So you don't want them over here. You're racist. Wake the hell up. You know you are. You're freaking racist. Always going to be one. When someone sit up there and say, Donald, Donald Trump is told the truth. He never told the truth. He lied. Matter of fact, he's close to getting inaugurated in January. And then the electoral votes going on, ni- on the 19th of December... What this man said, I am not going to build a wall. 
That's one lie. I am not going to prosecute Hillary anymore. Mm-hmm. That's another mm-hmm. lie. It's all these lies. All these lies. This man have foretold and have said. So how many lies do he have to tell? How many lies? That's interesting. We have lies after lies after lies after lies. But no one is not saying anything. But he said he voted for Trump because Trump didn't lie. Mm-hmm. Trump mm-hmm. lied about the university. He said that he didn't do it. He gave them education. And he will not back down. He just awarded, awarded them $25 million. You're a racist. And for my people who actually voted for him, they're just house Negroes. Anything the white man says that he's going to make America great again, basically putting in the, in the middle of it, great me white, and you know what it really mean? And you sit there and don't say anything? Here we go with more lies. Here we go. You are accepting your overseer, your masters. Like, we have a lot of unconscious Africans, Amer- Africans in America. We have people of color. Even the Hispanics who voted for him, they are... That house Negro. That's what they are. I'm just putting it plain and simple. This is what you call a house Negro. Simple as that. Always going to be a house Negro somewhere. Always going to be. So you say you voted for Trump. So he said, okay, you voted for Trump. Why you voted for Trump? I voted for Trump because he wasn't a liar. (laughs) I have heard it all. Oh, yes. But I have to, I had to review what Richard Spence have said, uneducated white nationalists, um, the review of Banner is in, Sessa in, trying to get in. Uh, Divorce, uh, I read about her. She's not that great either um, uh, over the education level. So we, you know, we really, we're, we're, we're not used to privileges. So it's not going to hurt us. Who is going to hurt is the poor white people who actually vote against their own needs. So it's going to hurt them. And when they see that their privilege are taken because you are no longer, you are not a one percenter, then you'll realize that you're not that one percenter. Then you'll realize that you voted for your own needs. Why? I just love quoting this is because President Johnson, Lyndon Johnson, if anybody read up on this on this man, he may be a Caucasian. I and I always say it, it's not all Caucasians. It's most Caucasians who have hatred in their heart. I was just watching the movie um Ruby Bridges. Anybody familiar with Ruby Bridges? She was a young lady who was going to um, school, first African-American in Louisiana, William Fix Elementary. Uh, uh, um, She was going to that um, school, and I'm watching how much a hatred that um, a lot of Caucasians had when that young little girl was escorted. And it was crazy because the governor put his little hound dogs in front of the school 
and they said the governor of the United of this um, of Louisiana said that she will mix with this school. This is how mm-hmm. how uneducated these guys are. That they really think the state is over federal. So they say the president of the United States said she will attend this school. It was just amazing. They had to explain to explain to them that the federal is over the state. This is how uneducated. These people are. They really think that they could do whatever they want in the state and the federal will not come in to omit it. That is so interesting how they think. That's why I'm calling out Richard Spence, the little white nationalist who sit up there and say that he's not a a white nationalist. You are. You are a Ku Klux Klansman. You are a racist, a bigot. And if until you come to reality that you are, you would never know history. You'll never recognize how much people of color contribute to United United States. Now, back on the thing, the deal about fighting for a country who does not like you. These same white Caucasians, these Caucasians, these Europeans who are racist will not fight for this country. But they say that this is their country. Some will. I would not take that away from them. But most will not. But then you want people of color to fight for this country. Are you insane? Are you insane? I will not fight for this country. I will not fight for a country who do not recognize me and my people of color. If any foreigners come in here, you you Caucasian, you racist, better stand up and fight for it. Because you don't want us here anyway. So why should I fight for a country who hate me because of color of my skin? I will not. I will not. I will not fight for this country. I will not. This country don't even recognize me, nor do they see me. They are killing my brothers and sisters like crazy. And you want us to fight for your country? I, I'm not blaming my brothers and sisters who joined the military. But I'm asking you, my brothers and sisters, what the hell this country done for you lately? You protecting a country who don't even recognize you. Spat upon the people who fought for them. Spat upon the Vietnam um, veterans who was happy to be color. They couldn't even go into a dining room to eat in front of the doggone restaurant. They were still called N-words. And they fought for this damn country. You crazy? You serious? This is how I want to play something. Black police chief fired from racist prosecutor. Prosecute. Because he upheld black folks' constitutional rights. I want to play this. The Real News Network. I'm Kimber. I want to play this. I want you guys to hear this. 
But the federal government is stepping in against the state of Maryland, the Pocomoke City government, and the Worcester County Sheriff's Department over a discrimination and retaliation case behind the firing of three black police officers. On Wednesday, the Department of Justice announced that they filed a motion in support of the three men asking for monetary compensation and to ensure that the workplace is free from discriminatory practices. And joining us for a briefing of how this case came to be are Taya Graham, correspondent for The Real News, and Stephen Janis, producer and reporter for The Real News. Thank you guys for being here. Sure, thanks for having us. Well, you both have been covering this case for over a year now, and there's a lot of layers to this, but it really starts with the firing of Kevin Sewell, who was the first ever black police chief of Pocomoke City. Tell us a little bit about Kevin. Okay, so he worked in homicide and narcotics in Baltimore City for over 20 years, and he actually went to Pocomoke City for his second life. Um, he was their first African American police chief, and the town is about 4,000 people evenly split between black and white. By all accounts, he was doing a great job. Uh, crime do dropped by 80%, and during the four and a half years he was in charge, there wasn't a single murder. So it was a surprise to everyone in the community when he was dismissed. One of the things that, um, you know, just full disclosure, I wrote a book with Kelly his job um, before will. he retired called Why Do We Kill? The Pathology of Murder in Baltimore. And in that book, he was highly critical of the uh, zero tolerance policing in Baltimore, some of the aggressive tactics. So I think when he moved to Pocomo, a small town, and became the chief, I think part of his goal was to change the way policing is done. And so he adopted, a, as Taya said, a community policing strategy where he walked uh, he got out of his car and literally walked the streets and ordered his officers to do the same. And through that, I think he built a relationship with the community that you could see. Did you got hear fired, that? Which is why it was so controversial. So it was he really, I think he knew about, about the neighborhood. Start doing something different. We do not need and he was fired white in 2015 by the mayor there, Bruce Morrison. So what led up to if the firing of Calvin Sewell? If you do not well, know the people, question don't govern our neighborhood. Arrest our people if you do not know the people. We don't need you in our neighborhood. Kelvin eventually filed a lawsuit, and in it he alleges that he was fired for not firing an officer who filed an EEOC complaint. Now, this officer, uh, Lieutenant Frank Savage, he was the first black officer in the Worcester County Drug Task Force. See that? While he was there, he experienced racial discrimination, racial epithets. When he said he was having a problem with them using the N-word in the office, he got a bloody dead deer tail on the windshield of his car. Well, he filed a discrimination complaint. Kelvin Sewell was asked to dismiss him. And when he said no, he says that's when he was and, fired. And that's one of the big contentions in the, in the suit is that it continually, they continue to ask Kelvin to fire them. And it's, the, since the suit has been filed, uh, the city has continually refused to say why specifically they were fired. And there were rumors that it was because he was incompetent, but there was no proof of that. They love saying that African Americans are uh, incompetent. I, we know, we finally that's learned the first word they will they use and, and say Calvin. that this they are kind of funny. incompetent. They went down the police station just before he was fired and said, you made an anonymous call to the police station, which sounds kind of absurd, right? Well, so they went to the police station, the council, sat there in his office and said, play the tape. And they played the tape, and Chief Sewell had called and said, this is, this is the chief, we have an anonymous tip. Right. So, uh, right. you know, that was one of the pretenses for firing. Then they tried to get him for stealing a computer. They said that he had taken a computer out of his office, but he had taken a laptop home to do work. And they had been doing surveillance on him. Yes. And they saw him put a computer in the back of his car. But it turns out it was his daughter's computer who was going to law school. Yes, she was studying so in the car. Yes. It seems from covering the story that it's constantly shifting why they wanted to fire him. But what Taya said, I think, is, you know, the main allegation of the lawsuit is, is really what happened. So there was a little point of contention about whether or not the mayor even had the authority to, to, to fire him. Has that issue been resolved? Well, no. Um, you know, the, the, according to the Pocomoke City Charter, the city manager is the person who's supposed to fire him. Um, and obviously the mayor and the city council fired him. Uh, the, the current man, the, manager, the city manager at the time, Russell Blake, had retired or said he retired on, on um, July 26 or June 26, which is when Kelvin was fired. Of course, according to records that we've seen, that is a point of contention that he really retired on June 30th. But it is very specific in the charter that the city manager must fire the police chief. So that, again, is another aspect of this controversy that has been a point of and they going to keep it going on and let me just and add on. another aspect to this controversy that city council is majority white 
And so majority the city white. council is majority white. There's one African American on the city council, Councilwoman Diane Downing. And she told me in an interview that she experienced uh, that she felt that she was out of the loop. That on occasions when she went to a council meeting, she could tell that they had information that she was not privy to. There were emails that were received by other council members that she didn't have access to. So the one African American on the city council who also stood up for Kelvin when they were trying to fire him has been out the loop consistently. So these three officers, obviously dealing with the challenges behind the harassment and the EEOC claims uh, that they filed. But I mean, things got really real in the community of Pocahoke yes. once Kelvin Sewell was actually fired. Tell us about the reaction. Well, I mean, there was tremendous passion because he had really connected, you know, his former policing, community policing had connected with especially the African-American community who were not accustomed to seeing a police chief on the street, who were not accustomed to seeing officers walking their neighborhood and, and talking to them. And, you know, he did stuff like would help people file college applications. He would help people find jobs if they wanted. They just weren't used to government being that either proactive or empathetic with their perspective. So you, you would think, you know, when you, when you went to the council meetings, the, the passions were high. People were yelling. You know, people were angry. And they have, out of this, grew, I think, even bigger than the story is the Citizens for Better Pokemon that Taya can talk about a little bit. Sure. Sure, and what I'd like to add is that that first city council meeting where the town was discovering that Kelvin had been fired, it was an even number of African-American to white people there to find out why he'd been fired, and the people I spoke to, the white people I spoke to, supported him. At the second city council meeting, those white people were gone. So I don't know whether or not that they were told to stay on their side of the fence. One woman that I interviewed said that people were actually fearful to come forward in their support for Kelvin Sewell. Um, but with the Citizens for a Better Pokemoke, this group is actually really amazing. Uh, I'm going to stop two here pastors, because I, want you, I want you guys to know that if someone who's a Caucasian and you allow them, you let them put that fear tactic in them. We've been going through the fear tactic for years and you allow them to do the things what they do and you sit back and allow them to do the things that do to us as African-American or people of color, then you might as well stay your ass on the other side and be with the racist. Don't come over here when they turn, finally turn against you. Get, get me? Because you're allowing that racist propaganda you're allowing the attitude the, the everything you're allowing this and when you allow these things then you might as well be them you might as well stand up there and say the hatred um uh, words that they say you might as well be behind them when they hang hung our ancestors up you might as well uh, support them okay so this man was fired because he up and hold uphold African American constitutional rights. He made the um, the the town in a better place. The the criminal act activities dropped. Um, he bettered he he bettered that whole cu community. Dang, what's wrong with my lips now? He bettered the whole community. So. The first thing most Caucasian wills do and say that uh, African American, if they want to get rid of them, they that's the first word they use. They are incompetent. Love that word. They are incompetent. Awesome word, isn't it? Come right off your mouth. They are incompetent. So that wouldn't pass, you notice, and I played, let it play. You notice that it didn't pass, so they said that he stole the computer. That didn't pass. Oh, they didn't fire him. That didn't pass. Uh, all, all kinds of stuff. This is the games you Caucasians have been playing, and I will not play with that. I will not play a game with your ass. I sure will not. No. Nope, will not. I will not. I will not play a damn game with you for nothing. I will not play these games with you. I I know your games. I studied you. I watch you. Now some people might catch me off guard because that person who I said at my job said that um he voted for Trump 
um, because he's not a liar. Mm, he caught me off guard because I thought he was a pretty good person. But once you um, told, once he told me that, I have nothing to say to him, and he knows it now because now he's all in my face. No, bitch, I know you're, I know you are um, a racist. I mean, they used to be word, but I'm just saying. Simple as that. Okay, your fat, um, racist, white behind on. Caucasian, European behind on. I'm good with you. You would not fool me again. Like I said, I'm not giving you a, a chance. I give you a chance. You'll take it through the, um, through the wall, Richard Spencer. <laughs> oh, that guy is so dumb. I played the whole recording. Y'all can go back um, on my last um, recording uh, I played the whole recording. He's totally dumb. But let's keep on hearing why this chief, this African-American chief, lost his job. And what they do is they have encouraged people to be more politically active, to read the charter, to go to city council meetings, even to put forward someone for uh, District 2, excuse, District 2 or District, District 1, one thank you, one. District 1 city council representative. So they run their own candidates. So. Right. So they went from basically, literally, being a sleepy town, trusting their city government, to being politically active and engaged and holding them accountable. That's, in, that's incredible. So it's really important to stress how major it is that the Department of Justice has elected to get involved in this because um, it, it appears that the mayor of Pocomoke who fired Kelvin Sewell did not have the legal authority to do so because there had been an EEOC exactly. claim filed. and for they people, were protected. Exactly. For people who don't know how the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission works, when you file a discrimina uh, discrimination claim against your employer, you have federal protections. Mm -hmm. They are not legally allowed to fire you. Mm -hmm. That's retaliation. So it appears as if they, these officers, or at least Kelvin, uh, at minimum, was targeted for retaliation. But um, the other interesting part of that is that when the EEOC has finished their investigation, they allow the person, if they find in their favor, they allow them the option to sue. And most times it's at the person's own expense. Yes. So for the Department of Justice to step in on behalf of these officers is quite remarkable. Explain to us how, why this is so significant. Well, think, um, think of one of the most significant cases recently in Ferguson, Missouri, where Michael Brown was killed by a police officer, and subsequently the Justice Department found tremendous structural racism, and they intervened there. So for the Justice Department to step into an employer dispute um, is monumental. It's landmark, you know, especially a dispute in a town of 4,000 people, which seems to me not to be, you know, you would say on the face of it, not affecting that many people. But I think, you know, what they what they found and discovered is that it is so egregious, and especially because it involves policing, which, of course, is a topic that we're all talking about now, and policing in communities of color even more important. So I think you can't underestimate uh, the involvement of the, of the, of the, um, Justice Department, and also more importantly, you know, they took all the allegations that Calvin and um, the other officers made in their lawsuit, and they adopted them into their lawsuit. So they believe fully that what uh, Calvin has been alleging, and Detective Savage, and Lieutenant Green, they believe it to be true. And they say, you know, they want structural changes to the government because it's inherently like, uh, you know, is a racially hostile environment. But Stephen, now this pits the federal government against the state of Maryland. And there have to be big implications behind this because what the government is, is alleging is that the state of Maryland is complicit in a way, along with the Worcester County Sheriff's Department and the city of Pocomo, of engaging in racist practices. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that people don't realize is that uh, Maryland Attorney General Brian Frosch is representing the <laughs> state police in this matter because state police were involved in the Worcester County Task Force. You know, you have... Um, the Worcester County Sheriff's Department. Uh, you have, at one point, the Worcester County State's Attorney's Office was involved in the suit, but they're not at the moment. But yes, you're going to have your tax dollars, Maryland tax dollars, paying for the state of Maryland, who has actually hired another private attorney, to fight the federal government on uh, a racial discrimination case that they say is open and shut. So that will prevent, present quite a dilemma for a state that purports to be progressive and says we're a blue state. Well, how can you be a blue state when you've really worked in a concerted effort to discriminate against these officers who everyone said was doing a great job? So, yes, it is going to create quite a dilemma for, for the government here. 
And, you know, the story really seems to involve the question of policing and specifically policing tactics and how policing is implemented in African-American communities. Well, what I can do is I can describe for you some of the ways that Kelvin police that were different. Stephen mentioned that he helped people fill out financial aid forms. He helped people get jobs at Tyson's Chicken or Breckman Construction. But he also got out of his car and walked. And that can't be underestimated because he actually got to know who the people in the community were, who were the mischief makers, as he called them, and who were the people that really weren't causing any sort of trouble at all. He actually helped one person who was a really severe alcoholic. He actually helped them get rehabilitation. So he, I mean, he wasn't just a police officer. He was a social worker. Um, He was a guidance counselor. And one of the things he did was really reach out to the kids. Um, In one case, during a Halloween, he would have the officers give out candy. He would have kids come into the police station, and he said he would take the smallest kid and put him up at front and put his police chief hat on him and say, this guy could be the chief of police. And so he really went out of his way to engage with the community, engage with the parents, engage with the kids. Well, one thing that's interesting, we we were just down there recently because there was, um, there's been sort of uptick in youth and teens on the streets. And it has upset a lot of residents because they're out all hours of the night getting into big fights. There was a big fight that was like 80 kids, and it required the response of all law enforcement agencies in the area. And so the city council proposed a, a curfew. And so we went out and talked to some of these kids, you know, to see w- what's going on. And one thing they said to us was, you know, Kelvin and his officers respected us. And we had a relationship with them. And that's what the people in town said. They didn't have these problems because they built relationships with people. Now, it seems that Pokemon City is back to the sort of old formula, right, where they, where they threw a couple kids to the ground, getting, you know, sort of aggressive tactics. So you see here the, the same problem. You know, you can police in a humane way, is, is at least what we learned in Pokemon. And, and it can be done well for the benefit of all. But you, you can't, you, you have to have some relationship. And I think th- those relationships are missing from, from policing here in, in most in most cities. And let me just add to that. The city council was considering levying a curfew on these kids. That was going to be their answer, to create more points of interaction for their police officers so that there could be more incidents, more possibility of brutality. See, this guy did a hell of a lot for his community. But they didn't, they didn't want him there, not only because he's African American, and they thought that he's going to sit back and allow them to do whatever to him and say whatever to other African Americans and get away with it. So he didn't allow it. They decide they're going to fire him. It's because he's not one of those good old boys to say, yes, sir, I'm master. That's your problem. You Caucasians, you want somebody to say, yes, I'm after. Yes, I'm after. This is amazing because I'm going to go back to Richard Spencer who sat up and say, well, we're not one of them guilty. White, we're, you're going to be surprised because we're not one of them guilty white um, white people, uh, Caucasian Europeans that um, um going to be guilty of what our ancestors did. We ain't ask you to. You don't have to. You don't never have to uh, worry about, um, cause I don't. I keep on telling you all the time. I do not want to eat at your damn table. I don't want to eat at your table. I want to have my own table. That's the problem. You guys brought us over here and dropped us and kicked us all the way around, and we still been successful. I don't want. I'm. I'm not begging you for nothing. But I do want what's in the Constitution. That's the killing part. You guys play, 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 play these games. And think we should continue to accept it. It's not going to happen. Richard Spencer said, we should get all the jobs. That's basically what he should say. And what we should do? Plow your fields, clean your toilet. You crazy. We're not going back that. We have houses and cars just like you. Guns too. You keep on pushing us and people going to turn like me. Because I'm, I'm resilient. I, I'm a straight up resilient militant person. Push me one time. That's all you get is one time. Uh, you don't get a second time. Because as soon as you push me, I'm going to whoop your ass. You can say I'm violent all day. 
But guess what? I, if all our ancestors, all the violence come from, it's come from you guys. Because guess what? Y'all took everything away from our ancestors. So they had to learn from whom? You guys. So they bred us, uh, they taught us what they learned from you guys. You guys. You have been doing violence through centuries of time. You don't have to feel guilty of what you um uh uh what you did, what your ancestors done. You don't have to feel guilty. But I guarantee you, I bet you won't come at us like that anymore. Burn a, a cross in front of my door and don't cover your a face. Don't be a coward. Show your face. Burn it in front of my door. I bet you I'll take somebody with me. Now we got a Ku Klux Klansman indoor. Why? In the White House? This is called reconstruction, people. This is what it called reconstruction. This is the third time reconstructions is happening. First time emancipation. Second time when the Jim Crow law had to go. And now, after uh, President Obama, because you can't stand a white a black man was in the office and he did a damn good job, and y'all gonna find out. I'm telling you guys, you white, white, Caucasian, you Caucasian, you Europeans, poor Europeans, y'all gonna find out. Y'all gonna miss President Obama. I tell you, this whole nation's gonna miss President Obama. You're gonna miss him. Trust me, you're gonna miss him. You're gonna miss him. I'm telling you. Watch. You're going to miss him. Hmm. Yep, you're going to miss him. Well, it's almost time for me to get out of here, but I want to play and review everything. Um, Everything that um, I had to say because um, it's not... Uh, what I had to say is, you guys, you Caucasians already know what type of behavior you have. You already know you're evil. Not all people. I'm not saying all. I'm saying some. Most majority of them. Well, you know what? What I want to play. A lot of people forget about this man. And I'm going to leave you guys by him just saying something. Back to Africa movement, unrealization. Nope, Mark Garvey's tell the truth you don't want to hear. That's what a lot of people don't want to hear. Marcus Garvey, they don't want to hear what this man had to say. But I'm going to leave you some recording of Marcus Garvey. Because you guys need to hear that. He told the truth. He was ahead of his time. And people really didn't want to hear it. Celebrate your Thanksgiving. Wheresoever you go throughout the world, the black man is discarded, is ostracized, is relegated to the lowest in things, social, political, and economical. This therefore suggests a problem and one that must be solved. We in this section of the world are not entirely free from this unkind, unsympathetic, and uncharitable behavior of the groups or races around us. But since man has been placed on his own responsibility, whether he be black, white, or yellow, he must act on his own account. We will not unduly whine or complain, but reason among ourselves and see what can be done to remedy this state of affairs. Life is a conflict. You have to fight your way through it, whether you will it or not. Those of us who are able to fight most stubbornly live, accomplish most, and to them go the laurels, the palms, and triumph of our civilization and world.